I was in the second grade, my elementary school was having a play and they wanted to honor Aboriginal people in it. And um, the people at my school immediately assumed that I could dance um, Aboriginal powwow dances. And so they decided to put me in a jingle dress and have me perform in front of the school and all our families. And um, they got really excited about it and I didn't want to let them down by telling them that I'd never danced powwow. So I put on the jingle dress and everyone was super excited. And I went on the stage and uh, I couldn't do it. <laughs> All I'd seen was um, men's dances. And so I was wearing a jingle dress and I did um, the chicken dance <laughs> instead because that's all I'd seen and they told me to dance what I knew so that's what I did. I have some family up in Vancouver and they are Asian and they have they they have white neighbors and one of their dogs met, went missing so they actually came up to my family that lived up there and knocked on the door asking if we ate their dog. My family and I were traveling to Disneyland I was um, about like 10 years old at the time, and we had to pass through customs. And um, we were going through customs, and obviously they see where um, the country in which like my parents originated from, and they sent us into that one room where we had to get checked and everything. And I remember like my brother and I sitting in the room while my mom and dad were getting questioned, and it was just terrible how they were treating us. They were like swearing at us, and I remember I started crying because. Um, I thought we were going to miss our flight to Disneyland and they said well that's just how it's going to be and till, like, till to this day uh, there's always like problems um, going through customs and it's just really sad to see how still to this day there's like that type of racism. One time I was at the store with my dad when he was visiting from where he lives in BC and uh, we were at like a restaurant just like a fast food place and there's like some guy working there and he's like so I want some soup juice here. I have a story about when I first um, started to work. I worked for the Regina Public School Board as um, a teacher assistant in a kindergarten classroom. And I worked in a inner city school where it was culturally diverse population. Um, one day, my uh, small five-year-old female uh, with beautiful pigtails and very blonde hair um, came back from a dentist appointment and the class had already begun. All the children were involved in those cool little centers that kindergartens can get to play in. And there was um, one area where there was just one little girl and she was playing in the doll center. Uh, there was a lot of commotion in the class and a lot of happy play sounds. And I greeted the little girl with the pigtails at the door and I asked her which center she wanted, to, where she wanted to play and she looked around the room and she chose a center that was already had too many children so I asked her, um, no there are too many children there how about you go play um, in the doll center with the other little girl and she looked at me and looked over at the little girl who was playing there looked back at me straight in my eyes and without blinking said I don't play with darkies. I was taken aback and didn't know how to respond because I knew that talking to this little girl and admonishing her for making a racist comment wouldn't really work because I would have to first speak to the parents about it. So I told the little girl that there was nothing wrong with her playing with the dolls uh, with the other girl that there was no differences she didn't uh, she didn't want to um, even entertain the thought of playing in the same area so she went and read a book last spring me and my family were going to uh, Los Angeles but unfortunately because of the color of our skin which is brown and our religion of uh, Islam we were told that we were a threat to the United States and that we were not allowed in their country. And we still, up to this day, are not allowed into the U.S. because of this discrimination. So the members of the Campbell GSA are discriminated against a lot because 
Uh, whatever posters we put up are usually torn down in the matter of days. Uh, this is actually the longest we've actually had posters that have stayed up. So that's how we as the GSA have been discriminated against. I was the only Muslim woman um, wearing hijab in the line at that time. So by the time I got to the front of the line, the guy saw me and he asked me, you know, he said, what are you doing in my country? And I didn't want to, like, snap back at him because you should never be rude to security guards, especially at border control. So I said, oh, well, you know, I'm going to this Muslim youth camp and it's going to be great. We're going to go do all these workshops and I'm going to learn a lot. And he's like, oh, a Muslim youth camp. Well, just let me see that letter. So I showed him the letter from my parents and he kind of looked at it and he's like, okay, well, we're going to need to take your picture. So can you take your scarf off? So he was really rude about it. And so I said, you know, well, no, I, I'm not going to take my scarf off. But they t took my luggage and they went through it and then they, like, interrogated me about, like, my entire life. They wanted to know about my parents and my siblings and my school and my classes and my marks and all my families and their names and how to spell their names and where they lived. And I had to tell them all these things because you can't really say, like, no, this is personal information because I didn't want to get in trouble and I didn't know why they weren't letting me pass. So I answered all their questions, and they like searched my stuff, and then they like made me sit there. And it took a couple of hours, so I missed my connecting flight. And I kind of, so I missed my flight, and they wouldn't let me phone the people that were going to pick me up. And since I was a traveling minor, they needed to know where I was, but they wouldn't let me phone them. So I started freaking out, and I started crying, because I was really upset that they were interrogating me, and I didn't know what was going on. And I, I'm not the kind of person that cries a lot, especially in front of other people, so it was really embarrassing. And then after that, they kind of just let me go, and they booked me a flight and sent me on my way, and I asked them, like, what can I do better next time so that you don't pull me aside and interrogate me? And they said, nothing, you've done everything right. And in grade nine, there was some kids who came up to me and called me a stupid nigger and said that I don't belong in this society and started beating me up, punching me and kicking me and they pushed me on the ground and kind of just walked away, kind of laughed about it, so. Definitely hurt, 